Hi, my name is Emma Robb and I am an electronic resources librarian at Cornell University. I joined Cornell about two years ago to assist with our implementation of Folio. I want to tell you a bit about Cornell and why we chose Folio. Cornell was founded in 1865 and has approximately 23,000 students. Our main campus is in Ithaca, New York, but we have a number of satellite campuses. We have 17 libraries, 1.6 million eBooks, and the majority of our annual materials expenditure is spent on e-resources. So basically we're a large school with a lot of e-resources to manage. Here's a look at two of our libraries, Olin and Uris Library on our Ithaca campus. Uris is our Harry Potter library. But here's how most researchers experience our library. We use Blacklight software to create our search interface. Prior to Folio, we were running a number of tools in the background. Primarily, we had been using the Voyager integrated library system for about 15 years, which had become clunky and expensive to upgrade. We didn't want to switch to Alma and potentially become boxed in by another out of the box LSP, so we started looking at Folio. Cornell believes in supporting open source tools and as an open source platform driven by community development, we can shape Folio's growth and implement the pieces of Folio that are right for our library. Cornell is deeply involved in the development of Folio, so we probably haven't saved much money, but for other libraries, Folio is also potentially a cost-saving alternative to the implementation and upgrading of platforms like Voyager and Alma. We began by migrating our e-resources knowledge base from Serial Solutions to EBSCO in January of 2019. We did this because currently the Folio eHoldings app is designed to pull information from EBSCO's holdings management. We went live with the ERM components of Folio in March of 2020, making us the first North American library to go live with Folio. One of the nice things about Folio is you can choose to use particular apps without having to use all of them. Just several months ago in July 2021, we fully transitioned all of our library services to Folio. But today I'm going to talk about just the ERM components of Folio, the agreements, e-holdings, licenses, and organizations apps. There is a lot I could say about these apps, so I'm just going to show some basic examples of how they function and delve a bit deeper into how Cornell has set up our apps, in particular the licenses app, since we're using that app to do some cool public displays in our catalog. In order to get the ERM apps up and running, we were able to migrate much of our data from our previous system in TOTA. The eHoldings app, as I mentioned before, is pulling data from the EBSCO knowledge base, which we switched to from ProQuest Serials Solutions. So let's take a quick look at that eHoldings app first. This is Cornell's Folio training instance. I wanted to take you here so you can see what adding an e-resource looks like. You can tell we're in the eHoldings app because that app is highlighted. And from the main screen, you can search the app by providers, packages, and titles. If, for example, I want to add a package or title from the provider American Chemical Society, I can search for American Chemical Society with providers selected. You can see that we have eight packages out of a total of 61 packages. I can click on American Chemical Society and scroll down to see all of the available packages. If I want to add a new package, I simply click on it and select add a package to holdings. This will add the entire package to our holdings. If I want to add just a single title from a package, I can filter the packages to just the ones that we own. And here I will select ACS eBooks where we only own one title from the collection. I can scroll down and click on a title that I'm interested in and select add to holdings. 
So obviously there's a lot more I could show you here, but I wanted to give a sense of how intuitive some of the basic processes are. Another app associated with Folio's electronic resources management is the Organizations app. Organizations in relation to ERM are usually content providers or vendors. You can see in this screenshot that the search function operates similarly to eHoldings with a search bar and checkboxes as limiters. Here's what creating an organization looks like. Simply click the new button and complete the required fields marked with a red asterisk. At Cornell, our codes are either migrated accounting codes for vendors or EBSCO provider codes for non-vendor records. Another great thing about Folio is that it's a single system, so all of the apps interconnect. You can link an organization record with a license record or an agreement record and move between apps by clicking on those links. Here's what Cornell's Agreements app look, currently looks like. We have um, 389 active agreements based on licenses stored in the Licenses app. We had to manually create our agreement records, but it was worth it because the agreements app functions as a sort of hub for the ERM components of Folio. An agreement record can link to a license record, an organization record, a resource or resources in the holdings app, and even to the orders app through a purchase order line. I want to give a quick demo of what adding an agreement line to an agreement looks like, since that's how you establish a link between licenses, agreements, and e-holdings. Here is Cornell's Folio training environment again. You can see this sample Adam Matthew agreement link has no resources associated with it. There are zero agreement lines. If I click on the agreement lines accordion, I can click add agreement line. From there, I'm uh, sorry, from there by clicking link e resource, I'm taken to the contents of the e holdings app. I can search for a package or title that's relevant to the agreement. Here, I'll search for African American communities under packages, since that's a package offered by the publisher at Matthew. By clicking on it, I've now linked it to the agreement record. I can click save and close. And there's the resource from eHoldings attached to this agreement. Because we can create these connections between apps, we've been able to display information from the licenses app in our public facing catalog by linking resources in eHoldings to agreement records to license records. And that's what I want to spend the rest of this presentation demonstrating because it's a cool feature that's available for any library to make use of. The Licenses app allows us to record, store, and organize license agreements and associate them with our e-holdings, as well as define and demarcate terms of use pulled from those licenses. We began working with the Licenses app by migrating the licenses and terms we had stored in our previous ERM system, and we've been manually inputting new licenses and cleaning up existing data. Here is an example of a folio license record for American Chemical Society. It links to other apps in Folio, like the Organizations app and the Agreements app under the Organizations and Agreements accordions here. There is a Terms section where you can view any terms you've defined for the license, as well as any primary terms or terms you have set to always display. This is where we'll be focusing. There is also a Core document section where you can upload or include a link to the license and any other relevant documentation. You can see here that we've chosen to link to Box for our license storage. While you can upload core and supplementary documents into Folio and store and organize your licenses that way, or even just note a license's physical location like a filing cabinet or office, we've chosen to scan and store our licenses in Box by creating provider folders that are then broken down into signed documents like licenses, 
content documents like title lists and supporting documents like email communications. We've found this method to be cleaner than having in this case 28 files attached to the license record. But back to terms. The terms that display in a license record can be edited and created in the Folio Settings app. This screenshot displays the licenses section of the Settings app and the space where we create terms and pick lists. You can name terms using the label field, determine whether they'll display publicly or to staff only under default visibility where you set internal or public, and establish how to denote the term under type, for example, a text box, an integer and unit combination like 30 days or a pick list of your making. The terms created in settings then display in the license record under the terms accordion. So anyone with few access to the licenses app can quickly see whatever terms you've deemed relevant and pulled from the license without having to actually read through the license. Here you can see our term, who is permitted to use this resource, where we define authorized users using the authorized users pick list that we created in settings. We wanted relevant terms to display in our public facing catalog. An applications programmer in Cornell University Library's IT department used an API call to pull our terms information from Folio and display it in our catalog. They added a license ID to individual items in our catalog index. This value allows us to make calls into Folio that pull the license data, which we then display to patrons through a terms of use link, which I will demonstrate shortly. If a term is marked public as opposed to internal, then the information we've included under the terms label, type, and public notes fields in Folio will display in our catalog as the license term, permissions, and a note if present. You can see here the license term is secure electronic ILL permitted, which was the term's label. Permissions displays the type, a pick list we set up. We also coordinated with some of our term's primary users, like our interlibrary loan staff, to determine what sort of information we'd like displayed and how. In this example, you can see how our ILL staff wanted to know whether secure electronic ILL is permitted, and they wanted us to include any additional information, like whether ILL lending is limited to United States only, for example, in a notes field. As I mentioned before, in Folio, everything is contained within one system. So the licenses app links to our agreements app, which links to our eHoldings app. I'm going to do a demo of how all of these apps interconnect and then how we've pulled data from Folio into our catalog to display our terms of use. The American Chemical Society license, which is here, links to four American Chemical Society agreements that we created in the Agreements app. The American Chemical Society Subscribed Journals Agreement contains an agreement line that links to the ACS Publications Journal Package in eHoldings. You can also, from eHoldings, see the agreement associated with this package. If you search for a title contained within this package in our catalog, for example, here is our catalog. For example, accounts of chemical research. The record contains the terms of use link that pulls from the ACS license record in Folio. So library staff outside of library technical services like our ILL librarians can check the catalog to know whether they can lend materials to other libraries or place them on course reserve. And students and faculty can check the catalog to know whether scholarly sharing is allowed, for example. This is just one example of how we can pull, share, use, and reuse and apply data that is stored in Folio. As we progress with Folio, we like to ask ourselves what are workflows that we do somewhere else outside of Folio or we can't really do yet that we could bring into Folio. We participate in the Folio ERM SIG so that we can influence how Folio ERM develops and be sure it meets our needs at Cornell. 
We are currently running the Iris version of Folio at Cornell, and we're about to upgrade to Juniper. Juniper should include a new dashboard app that we're excited to use to manage our renewals. At the moment, we use an old bug tracking system for selectors to submit requests for e-resources and for us to keep track of negotiating, licensing, acquiring, and making those resources available. We'd like to integrate that process into Folio, and we're hoping the up and coming tasks app could be developed to do so. Two of us at Cornell participated in its testing with that idea in mind. We are also interested in tracking open access resources, and one of our librarians is on the open access SIG so he can participate in the direction of that app. There are also ideas that we have for Folio's future development, for example, adding a Perl server to Folio or OCLC could offer an easy proxy tab within Folio so that service could be managed from within Folio. The IP registry could feed information to a library's Folio instance about which publishers are tracking IP addresses through IP registry. All of these apps could be developed and made available through the Folio marketplace, a concept that was explored in Folio's early days. The marketplace was going to be a space where vendors and libraries could offer up tools that they'd created. These could be open source or they could be subscription or purchased products. Say for instance, you created a connector for one external resource, maybe the ProQuest knowledge base to Folio. You could sell it or offer up a free version to others as you chose. This would make it a lot easier for new vendors to offer their services to Folio customers. As a platform whose development is driven by the community that uses it, we have the opportunity to make these wish list items uh, real through Folio. So thank you. If you have any questions about the presentation, you can reach me at ehr34 at cornell.edu.